Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at the account section that's built into OS X Server. Now, over here in the account section, uh, you can see we've got users and we've got groups over here. And this is how you'll set up your network accounts. Now, a couple of things before uh, we get started. Uh, if you haven't already set up Open Directory, uh, you may want to go back and do that. Uh, I've done a screencast on how to set that up in uh, my previous screencast, so you might want to walk through that process. Uh, that will also rely on some of these other features like DNS and things like that. But uh, in order to get this going, you want to make sure that you've, uh, you've got Open Directory so that you'll see the same things that I see in this screencast uh, if you want to use network accounts. Now, let's take a look at the users uh, section here and just get an idea of how this works. You'll notice here right away I've got a user, which is myself, already set up. Uh, you can see it says it's a local directory account. Now, what that means is that means that this is the account that was created on my Mac when I set it up. And so any accounts that you've got that are local accounts will actually show up here. So these are accounts that are based on the machine itself. And so, for instance, if I was to pull up uh, system preferences here. Let me just center this for a minute. And if I went over here to users and groups, your users would be right here. And so you can see here's my user account right here. This account is what is showing up here in OS 10 servers. So server will pick up these accounts and show them for you. Again, it won't show the guest or, uh, or any of those type of accounts, but it will show the accounts that are actually set up on your server that have their home folders on there. So let me just go ahead and pop this down. So this is my account right here, and you can see it uh, tells me the type. Uh, it's an admin account because I've set myself up to be able to administrate the server. And so that's how we do that. Now, if I just do this drop down here, you'll notice I've got local users and I've got local network users. So I'm on all users right now. If I go to local users, you'll see it shows my local account. If I come down here to local network users, you notice it says no users because I haven't set up any network users yet. Again, network users uh, rely on open directory, and so you'll need to have open directory set up for this to work, but just wanted to show you how that, uh, how that functions. Uh, so let me just come back in here. We'll go back to my uh, all users, and let's go to this account here. Now you'll notice when I select the account uh, down below here, if I just click this gear icon, uh, I've got uh, various uh, things that I can do to the account. Uh, I can edit the user, and, and I'll show you that in a minute. I can edit access to services. And so if I just click on this, what it'll do is give me a list of available services, and uh, all the ones that I have access to have check marks by them. If I want to remove a service, uh, I can simply just check it like this and say OK, and now that user will no longer have access to that particular service. Uh, so I'm just going to leave this alone here and just say Cancel. Uh, now, the other things that you can do down here is I can edit uh, mail options. If I click edit mail options, uh, you can see that it'll uh, tell me how I want to handle mail. And now this is if I'm using the mail service over here. Uh, I can actually say where I want the mail stored, if I want it stored locally or forwarded from the server, okay, to the user on whatever machine they're on. And then I can limit the size of their mailbox to whatever size I want to put there. Uh, so I'm just going to cancel this, but I just wanted to show you that you can do that in here. And this is where you would now set the mail options for each user. Now if I come down here, I can change the password. If I click on change password, right in here I can just put in my new password and verify it. And that password will be changed now. So if you ever have users that lose their passwords, you can come in here and change them for them right here on this screen. Uh, let me just cancel that. Uh, and then down below you can import users or export users. If I just click on import users, it will uh, bring up a dialog here that will have me search for where those users are to pull them up. Let's cancel that. Uh, or if I want to export users, I can click on export here and then it'll export the users in a text file. And I can either do the selected user or local users or network users. And that will export uh, all of that data and information on those users so that you can look those up in a text file. So just wanted to show you that there are ways to get the data out of here once you put it in. Now, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and add an account. So I'm just going to click the plus here, and I'll click the plus sign. And so this uh, is a new user account here. Now, if you notice, I can choose a local directory account or a local network directory. Now, again, if I want uh, this user to be able to access services outside of the server itself, then I want a local network directory. If I'm just creating a local account on the, on the Mac itself that I'm working on, I can create a local directory here. In this case, I'm just looking for a local network directory because I want to set up a network account. So next, you just put in a few name, uh, a full name. We're going to put in John Doe here. And then you can do an account name, which is basically going to be all lowercase and no spaces. So I can say John Doe, or if I wanted to, 
I can just say John D if I want that to happen. Now in here, I can add email addresses. And so if I click the plus here, I can add any email address that I want to put in for this user. And that email address could be used for things like, uh, you know, updates to calendar and those sorts of things. Now, if you're hosting uh, the mail service here on server, then you would be using that uh, email address and any other ones you wanted that user to have. Or if not, you would put in email addresses that you've got on your own. Like for instance, for me, I've, you know, got Todd at ToddOltoff.com that I could put in there and then that email address would then work for that particular user. So whatever you want to put in there you can set up that email address and go from there. And then I have put a password in for this user so I'm just going to put in a, a password here and then just repeat it and that's all set and ready to go. Now if I just click this little key over here uh, you'll notice the little password assistant pops up and it will give me a suggestion for a password if I want to have help with that and it will uh, give me a password that it will fill in for me. So I can go ahead and choose one if I want to have more of a random password that's put in there. So again, I can choose by type whether I want letters and numbers or numbers only or random. You know, if I didn't random, I could put that in there. And it would just give me uh, a random password that will fill into that space and make that work for me. Uh, I'm just going to come back up and put manual so that it's only uh, the ones that I want here and then I've got to re-put these in. So let me do that real quick. Okay, once I've got that in there, I can choose whether to allow the user to administer the server or not. So that's administrative privileges. I don't want that for John Doe, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Now I can also choose where I wanna store the home folder and this is important. I can choose local only. Uh, I can choose to store their home folders on the server or none services only. Let me tell you the difference between these. Local only means it's only going to be on this particular Mac. It's going to set up a home folder. Uh, the home folders uh, server there is I can put the home folders on the server itself so that a user then can log into any computer on my network and have their desktop come up. It's just going to pull their home folder uh, from the Mac itself. And then none services only is just someone who would then would have access only to the services on the server. They don't have their home folders or anything like that uh, set with the server at all. So I'm going to say just services only for him right now. Uh, now I can put in keywords, you know, I can uh, for whatever this is. And so in this case, let's say demo account. And you can see it kind of does it like tags. And then I can put some notes on the user as well if I want to do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and just create this. So it's going to create this user for me, this John Doe. And so there you see John Doe right there. Uh, and you notice he's a local network uh, account here. You notice because he's not an admin, it doesn't have a type there. It's just a regular local network account. Okay, one more thing that you can do on here. If I just uh, control click on a user, you notice I get this drop down menu. And you can see all my different options are here where I can edit all of the different things I showed you previously. Uh, I've also got some advanced options here. If I just click on advanced options, you notice I get this drop down uh, that allows me to do a little bit more work here on this particular user. Now, this is uh, kind of a crossover between what we used to do in Work Group Manager that's now built into users and groups where I can have a uh, give it a user ID. I uh, choose, uh, again, the group that it's in. It's in Open Directory Users. And again, I wouldn't uh, change this too much because it could uh, you know, mess with the account, as it says. But you can put in other things. You can put aliases in here uh, for John Doe. Uh, you can uh, change the login shell if you want to do that, the home directory and where that's located, the path. You'll see where the SharePoint is. Uh, for all that information. So again, it's just a kind of a, a shortcut to more information uh, that's more advanced for the user. I'm just going to say cancel. So let's go ahead and just control click again. Uh, I can also choose which columns are visible. So I can have uh, email addresses visible and you see now our email addresses show up over here. Uh, if I do that again, I can come in and just add other things like keywords, notes. I can add the user ID. So that way I've got the ID number over here that I can check. And so again, I can just uh, play with that a little bit. And then I can also show system accounts. So let me just do this real quick. And what you'll see is all of a sudden, all of these different accounts are in here. Now, this is all the system account uh, information. Again, you'll see some of this stuff uh, normally in Workgroup Manager. And so uh, that's how you get access to all these system accounts. Again, pretty, uh, pretty complicated. You really don't need to go in here too much unless you're doing some advanced stuff uh, and you know what you're doing. So I'm just going to control click and hide the system accounts and it'll take us right back to where we are here. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how uh, the users area works. Again, I can always uh, delete a user just by clicking the minus here. Now, what I want to do is let me show you how uh, groups work. So let's just click on groups. And so automatically you have a work group. 
and you can see that you've got two members here and it's in the local network directory. Now with this work group, I'm going to go in for a minute. Let's just click on this icon here. I can edit the group. Again, I can edit access to services. Now this is the same as I showed you before, but this would be access to services for the actual work group. So the work group itself will only have access to the services that you select. I was going to say cancel again. Uh, but if you come down here again, you can import and export groups just like we did with users. And that makes it uh, fairly simple to do. And you can also hit the plus button here uh, to add a new group. And so let me just go ahead and do that and walk you through a new group. Now, again, I can choose the directory, whether it's the local network directory or only the local directory. Again, most of the time you're just going to want to make it at the network level so that you can access it in other places. Uh, simply put in here uh, the full group name. So the full name, let's just say, would be, uh, let's just say kids here. And I'm going to say kids lowercase. Uh, again, I can add mailing lists if I want to. If I've got a mailing list that I want to put in there uh, for this particular group that they use, I would add that here. Uh, I don't, so I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, if you do add a mailing list or whatever, you can allow mail from non-group members uh, so that people outside the group can still send email to this group, or you can confine the list to just the group. I'm going to say OK here. And so now I've got this kids group here. Okay, You see I've got no members on here. I'm just going to double click on it. And once I do that, now I have more options here. You'll notice I can add group services, like I can make uh, give the group a shared folder. So if I click on that, it's going to actually add a shared folder for this group that they can use on the server to share files. I can make uh, members messages buddies. And this is a great one to add if you are using the messages service uh, because they'll automatically add um, anybody in this group to the buddies list uh, in messages itself. Down here is where I can add, oh, you can also create a group wiki. Uh, once we get the wiki up, I'll show you how to do that, but that is an option for groups. Uh, I can add members, and so if I just click on here and start uh, typing, I can say, oh, there's John Doe. I want to add John Doe to the, to the group, and so now he's in there. And, of course, I can do keywords and notes, so I'm just going to say OK. And now you can see it's got one member here because John Doe's been added. Now, just like we did before, if I select a group, I've got some options, options down here for the group, but I can also just Control-click on the group, and now I can edit the group, um, I can export, and there's advanced options here as well. Again, it allows me to change the group ID uh, for kids. Uh, again, uh, you only really need to do that uh, if you've got uh, you know, a more advanced setup, but the options there. Uh, and then again, visible columns. And so I can do the same thing, group ID, keywords, notes, all of that. And then I can show the system accounts, again, right in here if I want to do that. And you can see all the different system accounts that are here. Uh, and ready to go. So I'll just right click on that and we'll hide uh, the columns again. So again, I can sort by all groups, local groups, which there are none, or only local network uh, accounts. You'll notice that when I select the local network accounts, I can also lock them. And so if I want to unlock them, then it's going to ask me to log in with the directory password. I'm going to authenticate and now it's unlocked so that I can work on it. So you can lock it down so no changes are made by accident. Uh, again, same kind of thing here. I can edit uh, templates, or I can go like this. If I come on here, I can create a template uh, from the group when I'm in the local network area. And that's just a template now that uh, I set up. And then if I want to add other templates, then they're just quick ways for me to add groups with information already pre-filled in. And it just uh, allows you to more quickly create groups. So they cancel. Uh, that same thing can be done. Uh, let me just show you back here on users. If I go to network users, and I click on this, you'll notice that I can create a template uh, from the user right here if I want. And so there's a user template where I can set up a lot of details there on how I want these users to go. Uh, I'm going to cancel that. Uh, the other thing I can do in here is I can edit the password policy. And so this is for this particular user. I can say how I want their password to be laid out. It's got to contain certain characters. It's going to be reset every so often. So I can come in here and make those changes right here. Uh, it's going to cancel that. So that gives you an idea of how users and groups work. Again, it's, uh, it's great to be able to have these set up with a directory account, and uh, hopefully that gives you all the different features that are involved in that. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.